Hey guys, Anthony, 4v4 Touring Australia. We're just doing a little trip for a few days. We're just starting off here in uh, second stop for the day in Erica. Gonna be heading into a few tracks around north and uh, east of here. Find a nice campsite. We're not here to wreck cars, this is the reality channel. Let's have a look at the vehicles, a little bit of information here. So this is a 2009 120 Prado. Uh, we, just, we just hit the way bridge actually. You'll find it interesting, possibly you might find it interesting. This one weighs 2720 kilos. This one here weighs 2560, so that's a GX, nice and light. GX is a lot lighter than uh, the GXLs. Our 120 here, that came in at the heaviest at 2820, okay, if I got it right, 2820. Um, you'll see they're all running the BFG all-terrains, or all the other guys are, because they know they work off-road, very grippy off-road. Uh, these, if someone asked me, hey, what are these tires like, I'd say, awesome, but, you know, that's on-road, they're awesome. They're not as good off-road, that's for sure. Um, once you get used to the uh, KO2s, it's hard to go back with off-road traction, but anyway. 20 uh what i say 28 20 and the last vehicle over here 2010 is that a 2010 Cole? Sorry? 2010 yes. weighing in at 27 20 also with the bfg ko2 27 80 i'll get it right 27 80 okay it's 27 80 28 20 25 60 and 2720. Anyway, guys, we're going to head that away and we'll show you some action on the tracks. All right, guys, so we just come down to Cooper's Creek, first river crossing for the day. So we thought it's time to um, let the tyres down. We couldn't think of a better spot to stop and let the tyres down. We're just going to go down to around about the probably mid 20s, 26 psi mark, just to get started for the day. And we've got plenty more room to move to go down if we need to. If you haven't been down here, check out Cooper's Creek you can come in and uh, two-wheel drive situation but uh, yeah and there's the spa it's just not heated Piece of cake, mate. Gets deep around the corner. Careful on the uh, tracks where you're driving, you have to sort of this one. And it's bye bye, Sally. And uh, into the tracks. So if you're in a full drive, you can come through the creek, around to the right, you follow along a little bit, and eventually you get to a little right track on the right. I uh, can't remember what this one's called actually, but there's a sign on it. I think it's called, I don't know, but. It's your typical high country track, a little bit steep, a little bit rutted, and if it's wet, you could have some fun. Prado, no snorkel, oh no. Oh my God, what's gonna happen there? 
nothing. A little bit of a deep hole at the start there. Train. <laughs> what a spot. This one it has a bit of a, uh, a deeper hole towards the uh, start or end of it. About here, depending, you know. Definitely a floor pan wet job. Oh yeah, here they are, they're going over the... Uh, so this, this is the kind of area you don't come to in uh, winter unless you really want some fun. It's just a bit of a hill. It's near the intersection of, uh, what's this, Binks Road and Aberfelly. If you just go up, is it Bins? Bins Road a little bit and it's on the right. Historic marker. Gets traditionally really slippery on this right side here. They've now got blue metal to go up the left side. So we headed up uh, Bins Track and we turn left onto Army. I think it might be called Army South and we're following that down basically. Headed north. And I just wanted to say, you know the tracks are steep when you're in first low range and it runs away from you this part isn't too bad but just prior we've got more coming up very steep for the boys, they love them. First little bit of water coming down that says we're nearing the bottom of something. That's a little creek. That is the little creek, Fulton Creek. Then, of course, when you go down, then you got to go back up. And this track, it just keeps going up and down, up and down. This part's pretty good. I was able to uh, press the start button on the camera. <laughs> but yeah, coming around this turn here, it just gets steeper. I reckon right there, that peaks at about 30, 35, somewhere between the two. And a lot of these tracks are up close to about 30, which believe it or not, that's pretty steep. A lot of tracks are, you know, I mean, a lot of the steeper tracks people think are steep, around the 25, 28. 30's really getting steep on the tracks. Anything over that. There's not many tracks that are steeper than that. They might peak it, you know, for a moment. But uh, anyway, bit of fun cruising up here. Bought a few of the bigger rocks. Usually what we do is, uh, well, depending on the track, you know, track conditions, but often we'll stay out of the ruts. But here there's not a lot of ruts, so it's cruising up. Because it is the clean line. Alright, this one's a bit steep and a bit damaged, so it could be fun. We'll just go down here one at a time, just wait at the top there. Yeah. Some quite a few rock steps here. I'm going to head 
it doesn't really matter. Oh, that's a, it's a big rock step. Um, you don't want to get sideways on this either. So that's why I'm tempted to go. It's not too bad actually. I'm just going to go over it. I'd rather keep it straight. Keep it straight. Keep it slow. That's what the underbody protection's for. That's what the 120's for. And we just dropped off the front. Back's just come down nice and slow. And we've got another rock step. Front's just dropped down. Back will come down. This is not for the, uh, you know, this is for the uh, moderate, experienced drivers. Looks like it gets better from here. I'll just give the guy some guidance on getting down there. Okay. Bit of action on the tracks. There's always going to be a bit of action sooner or later. If you're lucky, we might even have a bit of action with these vehicles going back up some tracks. And you know, it never does it justice, we say that, but you're about to see. Once you come down a little bit more, keep coming. Slow it right down there, even slower. Slower, slower, yep, keep it moving, just real slow. Keep, that's it, keep it going, just like that, beautiful. Yep, keep coming slowly, yep, just cleared the bumper bar, nice and slow now, because the back's coming down, the front's about to go down the next step. Bit of skidding there guys, that might give you some idea of how steep it is. And these and it looks like nothing, it looks like flat ground, doesn't it? I don't know. Anyway. Just slow the back coming off that, that's it. There's still a bit of skidding there. Just make your way down slowly. Next. Okay, number two's coming down. Well number three actually. Of course I'm the guinea pig, I'm number one. Bit of fun, you know, we like a bit of action. You got us in the car. So guys, the key thing here is, and I know there's plenty of people that know more than me about it, like always, um, just check the comments if you're not sure guys, all the people that know more, no, no, just joking around, some people know more, don't they, yeah? It's always good, please provide your uh, information, that Sovereign bar had a tiny bit more clearance than the plastic bar, see, he listened last time, I'm not giving him any help, he's pretty well knows what he's doing, been there, done that, a little bit smoother, see the 120 don't... The 120 does it smoother than the 150, mate. Beautiful, look at that. All right, next. Just keep it going slow, because it is a bit loose in that down there. Looks flat, doesn't it? Plenty of skidding going uh, both up the hill and down the hill. Yeah, you have your left uh, rear in the air back there even. Probably a little bit more my side just because the second step it's a bit flatter. It doesn't matter, you'd be right. Just the air point it straight down the hill but yeah a little bit this way. The key thing is to take it real slow over those because that's where, yeah, if you get a bit too much momentum up, you can jump over the next one and then it gets a snowball effect, doesn't it, Mitch, eh? Just got to keep it going nice and slow, keep it controlled. Different ways to do this, we're not doing driving lessons, but in this case, keeping it slow with the brakes in these vehicles has worked just fine. Getting a bit excited, he's going a bit quick. Yeah, trying to find room for me to step down. Okay, so if you watch this video, this is our day, I suppose, day around Walhalla, day one. We're heading into some other areas, day two, day three. But if you want to know some track names, I'm just going to quickly recap on everything. And this is uh, going to be obviously the last main track of the day before we get to camp i'll show you the campsite as well before the end of the video um, obviously it is hard to include all information but i try and include all the important stuff a few driving tips what to do what not to do some nice scenery yeah a few driving tips and showing the other guys going through a few river crossings and a bit of wheel spin here or there but um the main thing i suppose is in case you want to come and have a look yourself 
basically we've headed out of Melbourne towards Maui, turned off there. At the back of Maui, head out towards Walhalla now. I can't give you all the tracks and track names because I just can't remember. You know, you get to know your way around and I, can't, I just can't remember all the track names. I mentioned some early in the video, general route. And, um, you know, we went to Cooper's Creek into the camp area across the creek, follow the track through. Then you take it to the right up the hill and that brings you out on, uh, what's that road called? Again, I've forgotten what it's called. And you can go down to Brunton's Bridge, have a look around. Come, We come back up there through Walhalla, continue straight up the dirt road. Then we took Bins Road once we get further up. You can actually go straight over that historic marker hill. I suggest you don't come up in this area in winter because it does get very slippery. You wouldn't be able to control the vehicle in the wet sliding down because it's got a lot of clay on it. It used to be worse than that and like a rock face ledges whatever slaty type you know you could it was hard but you could get grip on it if it was dry at the time where you got a bit of wetness you know rocks dry quick on the surface uh coming down in the wet crazy uh whatever it's got all that dirt on it it'll just get real messy in the wet dangerous but uh look we came down uh, yeah bins you could go over the historic marker hit go over the hill and continue straight down bins road up and then we turn on i think it's army south or something like that you go left and over your left shoulder and goes up a little bit and then you go around to the right follow that down look one way or another it turns into fulton creek track that's the main it's got a lot of up and down hills it's not easy and it's not hard it's somewhere in the middle it's your intermediate sort of you know you've got some driving experience and you want to go to the next level get out there and have a trip on your own if you want to do it on your own that's cool of course if you want to book a trip ants tag along tools check out our page ajs tag along tours actually but um we can organize a trip with just your group or we can get a group together um so you can you can head over there head down fulton's then we turned oh, where, what's this army north just so you know i think it's called army north this one and it's right at the top of army north that, that's got that rough section and there is a bypass so when the where the track splits to the left is the chicken track to the right is the hard track i actually didn't remember where i was when i was coming down to there i went oh I said on the radio to the guys i said oh what's this going a split here i don't remember a split here and that's because it's not a split in tracks it's just a little chicken track right so if you want the easy way go to the left uh, if you want the hard way like what we did just go to the right bit of fun we'll call it not the hard way going up still it'd be a bit of fun it makes i want to turn around and go back there but it's about 3 p.m. and we're getting close to our campsite. We're probably about, uh, I reckon we're about, I don't know, five or six k's from camp. So we're probably going to be, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes to camp. Depends if we stop again and have a look at any more, uh, anything else. But so basically at the bottom of this one, we're going to hang a left, if I remember correctly. It might be even called Connolly Creek Road or something like that, Connolly Creek Road. And that'll take us down to our campsite about another five k's down the road we'll show you that when we get there oh honey we're home and it's like a full drive track hardcore to get into what does it say there guys i have to tell you here we are as you can see lloyd's hut established 1987 private property shire of wellington hut will be closed for the week prior to and after queen's birthday weekend annual maintenance Check this out guys, check it out. So you can sit around the campfire. You can sleep with the spiders. And that'll keep you warm. Some uh, shower, there is some water tanks up the hill there. So there's actually even a shower in here. I think I'll be showering in there, but anyway. And there's your beds. Uh, perfectly good hut if you need a hut. Lloyd's Hut. The firewood here. It's handy, and there's your uh, little picnic table. And it's nice and quiet out here. So we've almost got the place to ourselves. Check this out, huh? This is technically 4x4 four four earth hut. They built it. Respect it. 
we just got these guys in the patrol over here. Other than that, peace and quiet, right? Show you this hut. Oh, they had to put bollards up because people had to still had to try and drive into them. What's the matter with people, right? Anyway, there's your fireplace. There you go, as I said. That was built by the bunch of guys from 4 before Earth. So if you come here, I'm not going to tell you too much more detail. The people that want to know, they can keep watching videos, give you a bit of info, but uh, there we are. We just got to pick the best green grass we want to camp on. Bit of shenanigans going on just there, but just over here, we've got a little walkway. Let's go and check out the creek. Watch out for snakes. Make noise coming down here, so a few spiders too actually. We'll just do a bit of uh, pruning before we go past that one. There's a stairway. Should have brought the uh, 15 litre collapsible bucket. Because right here, look at that water, beautiful. Of course, you know, you've got to say not drinkable, boil it and all that, but it's definitely swimmable. People will be down here building little rock walls. Nice little creek. What's this one called again? Donnelly Creek, I think, if I remember correctly. So we had the choice of using the uh, fireplace in the gazebo. Nobody else has turned up. It's absolutely awesome. So we've got our campfire over here. And it's a butter bing. Everybody's all set up. Going to cook some dinner. That's it for today. So thanks for watching. And you know the deal. Please give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed that. And now's the time to subscribe and turn the bell on. We'll have more information from tomorrow in another video and so on and so forth. We might even do a couple of review videos. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya.